I would like to thank Jonathan for leading that song. It's quite a beautiful song. It's one of my favorites for several reasons. High or not, in the note, I think we all meant that one. I think that was a very passionate outpouring that we all uh, participated in. It's a beautiful song. If you would like to follow along with me, our text will be Galatians chapter 5. It's a little bit of a lengthy reading, but I think we'll be okay. When we think back to history regarding the American Indians, and we look at how they named their children, it's usually in some form of reference to different aspects of nature, uh, sometimes even battle terms, or even certain actions that would occur within the home. Names such as Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, which I had a calf named that because even at a young age I had a different sense of humor. And you might even have Laughing Water, or Brave Warrior, Running Feet, or even Mischievous One. And from the research I did, one of my personal favorites, Imatola, which means she dropped it. <laughs> or even Mentahoya, which simply means she came and strained it. These are, these are real names. I'm not making them up. I'm not that creative. But they... They had these names for their children, and they're based on either different characteristics that they see in that child, or as we said, different forms of nature that they saw. Could be a stream nearby or a thunderstorm that occurred that night. Either way, what I would like to point out this afternoon, a few moments, is our actions indicate our character. And that was the point of those names is the, we see as parents that these children are going to have a similar character, so they're going to get their name. So in Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16, it says there, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye, let, if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, Heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things, or do such things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So we're given a picture here of basically two possible lifestyles. And as Paul points out, they're contrary to one another. To follow after the flesh and fleshly lusts is one option. And by doing so, we would be committing works of the flesh. 
we would be unable then to inherit the kingdom of God. Against that, contrary wise, is to walk in the Spirit. That is seen by one bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And it is this individual who bears this fruit who is eligible to inherit the kingdom of God. There aren't really there are no other options here, and that's not oh I'm good at meekness today, but then you forget about all the others, you're not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. This is one spirit or one fruit of the Spirit, singular fruit of the Spirit. These are different aspects which God expects the Christian to possess. Very similar to Matthew chapter five with the Beatitudes. You can't be strong in one area and lacking all the others and still be expected to be considered faithful. We must be in possession of all these different entities, these qualities rather. Now this type of thing in mind, these lists that we just read, what would your name be? Would it be peacemaker or generous heart? Long fuse, I had to throw one in there for temperance. Or would it be evil tongue, homewrecker, or even heretic Henry? Based upon the list of actions that we've just read in our text, which one would describe you? As Christians, we're expected to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit means that we are to be guided by the New Testament teaching. To learn what it says for us and to put those principles into practice. Always living as God instructs. Though sometimes we do stumble and if we allow it to we can develop bad habits. All of which are covered in this passage. If it's not expressly mentioned the such like would cover it. But instead we're expected to produce the fruit of the Spirit. So if you are not a Christian, you are indeed living on the fleshly level. Why not put these different things away and walk according to the Spirit? Render obedience to the gospel, ultimately leading to baptism, to wash away your sins. Or if as a Christian you've allowed, to, you've allowed yourself to become as mentioned in verse 19 through 21, one of these fleshly sins have allowed to overtake your life. No matter the need here, answer the gospel's call by either confessing sin or becoming a Christian. If either of these you have a need of, please make it known as together we stand and sing.